All right, good evening, Facebook. Good evening, Corona Days Professional Development Group. Thank you for joining this evening. I am Danette Edwards, the founder of Corona Days Professional Development Group. I'm here this evening with Anthony Paradiso. He's going to talk to us about inclusion and the importance of storytelling. This evening, he's gonna talk about embracing diverse and inclusive environments and how they open the door to endless possibilities that drive professional and financial success. He's also going to review inclusion and its impact on individuals and organizations. He's going to explore how inclusion correlates with storytelling as a means to express our true authentic selves by sharing our experiences with one another. Uh, and then he says, it is true that sharing stories makes us vulnerable, but this is where real trust starts. So the shortest distance between two people is a story. We all have our own stories to tell. Let me tell you about Anthony. Anthony has 15 years of HR leadership experience with an expertise in diversity and inclusion and employee relations. He is the founder and president of All Things AP, where he, I'm sorry, where it is his primary purpose for individuals to be their authentic self. He is on, uh, oh, on a host of councils and boards and has authored uh, and been quoted in several articles focusing on surrounding topics that include leadership, uh, diversity and inclusion, and employee relations. Serving as a speaker, influence, blogger, and educator, he is proud to have influenced the industry regarding unbiased and inclusive work environments. You guys know me. I'm going to immediately, wow, we have a bunch of people here this evening, Anthony. So I'm going to immediately turn this over to Anthony. Uh, just to let you guys know, uh, if you have any questions, drop them in the chat, either on Zoom or in fa on Facebook, and I'm going to give them to Anthony as he is presenting. He would like an interactive presentation. So I'm going to go ahead and mute myself and turn it over to Anthony right now. We already have some comments in the chat, but I'm going to turn that over right now. Okay, Anthony, thank you. And sure. please add anything that I missed out, okay? And I'll just share a screen now, I guess? You can share a screen if you'd like. Okay. You see the, you see the prompt? Okay, perfect. I'm just going to get it. Okay. I'm going to go to the chat box. Just make sure everything is good there. So I see in case. I can see your screen. Yes. Okay. Making sure. Very good. Well, hi, everybody. Um, as Danette said, my name is Anthony Paradiso, and I am the uh, founder and president of All Things App. Um, I started the company that I have right now about, about a little bit towards the end of last year. Um, my, my story really comes uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the diversity and inclusion uh, space. Uh, about five years ago, I was asked to um, spearhead uh, uh, DNI um, initiatives in New Jersey uh, with the Garden State Council, sure. Which, 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 which I'm sure I'm not sure if you all know what term is, but it's a side of human, of human resource management, and they needed um, help with the DNI, um, uh, the DNI program. So I volunteered help about, about five years ago. I really, really liked it a lot. It was I had a strong passion for it. Um, uh, as then also said, I was in HR for the last 15 years, so I've been mostly doing employee relations. Uh, but when I got involved, but when I got involved in the DNI space, I really it just was something I really. Um, had a strong liking for. Uh, I, I think it was one reason was for the reason the fact that I'm. I think that I am gay. Or not that I, I know I'm gay, <laughs> but um, uh, but but being gay, I've been through a lot um, coming out, and, and I've learned you know being your full authentic self is really um, is really important uh, for you personally and professionally. And so I started the company All Things App really to kind of give presentations and educational workshops uh, surrounding DNI. So that's just a little bit of background about why, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, what happened with, with all things app and, and whatnot. So as I kind of went over, I'm not going to go over each thing about me. Um, as Danette has, has already given you a little bit of, of, of a background about myself, uh, but that's what it is. Um, I, I do have my inclusive uh, workplace culture specialty with Sherm. Um, I'm also in the NGLCC certified, which is the uh, LGBTQ Chamber of Commerce. So I'm certified to them. And, and whatnot. And, and that, again, like I said, everything is in there. Uh, just a little more things about me. So I was raised in a working class family. 
I'm a husband, um, I'm a proud uncle, a first generation college grad, a gay cis cisgender male, member of Toastmasters, blogger, um, speech impediment, and I'll get into vulnerabilities a little later regarding the speech impediment. Love to travel, um, hoping to travel soon again. My, my goal is maybe next summer, hopefully everything is a little more, um, more normal, if, if there even is anything more normal, and I'm a certified HR professional. And these are just some pictures of, I'm being a little corny here, but I do love these pictures. Um, so that's my, my parents on the top, my dog Lizzie, my husband and I, I think we're in Amsterdam, I believe, and then my uh, nephew and niece, uh, Jonathan and Adriana. So diversity and inclusion. So I've always, uh, so this is a quote by Verna Myers, um, a quote that I found a few years. This is, no, this is a pretty, um, this quote has been around for a while, uh, but, but Verna Myers, this is a DNI expert, um, and she said diversity is being invited to the party, inclusion is being asked to dance. It's been a, it's always been something that I just gravitate towards. Um, it's 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 probably it's probably one of one of the most um, recognized DNI quotes out there. So if I was in a room with you right now, if we were, if I could see everyone's faces, I would normally kind of go, go around the room and ask you, what is diversity to you? And like in a word, you know, when you think of diversity, what does it mean to you? And whatnot. I can't do that here. Um, you can feel free to mention uh, maybe in a, in a set in a word in, in the chat box of what diversity means to you, or what or what word comes to you when you hear the word diversity. Um, so while while I'm doing that, or, or while you're thinking of words, uh, this is what uh, this is uh, one of the definitions that you could you that, that you know this is one of the definitions of diversity. Um, it's any dimension that can be used to different that, that could um, separate groups and people from one another. It's about empowering people by respecting and appreciating what makes them different in terms of age, gender, ethnicity, et cetera. So obviously, obviously it, it, it dimensions, you know, it's, it's, it's bringing groups um, together. Uh, you wanna diversify organizations and the numbers are all there and I'll, and I'll go through those as, as, the, as, the, as, the slides go for, as the slides go forward, uh, but there's many different numbers that show that a diverse, um, uh, that a diverse workforce um, is, 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 is best for the company. Um, it's, it's the right thing to do, but it's also more profitable for the organization as well. Uh, diversity allows for the exploration of these differences in a safe, positive, and nurturing environment. It means understanding one another by surpassing simple tolerance to ensure people truly value their differences. So I, so it drives better results, as you can see here. Um, I'm not going to go over each thing, but you can clearly see here that, that the numbers show that having a diverse workforce is best. Um, having 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 a mix of ethnic backgrounds, you get 30, you get thirty three percent more likely to outperform their competitors. Um, generates nineteen more revenue than less diverse work environments. But and then as you, and as the presentation is about, it's really about more of inclusion and, and incorporating storytelling. So. I always want to mention diversity because it, you know, inclusion involves diversity and diversity you know, involves inclusion. Um, we've heard, we've probably been hearing the word inclusion a lot more in the last year or so. Um, diversity has been mentioned in a while, but, but um, inclusion is, is becoming or is, is now a very strong, um, a very strong component of DNI because at least in my opinion, without inclusion, you can have diversity and with, you know, with, without um, diversity, you can have inclusion, you need both. They're, they're both equally important. If not, inclusion might be more important than diversity. So again, uh, what, what, what comes to you, what comes to mind when you hear the word um, inclusion? So I, thought, I always found this image um, to be just a perfect way of looking at things because on the left, it shows you all the different pieces, uh, different colors, and the, just the way they are, the way that, how they're scattered. And then you, when you put them together, um, that's really inclusion. We wish it was that simple, but it takes uh, takes an organization some time to do that. So, what what is inclusion? So, inclusion refers to the degree to which diverse individuals are able to use their voice, participate in the in the decision making processes within a group, uh, the amount of power uh, they have within that group. Uh, people of all backgrounds feel like they actually belong. So, you, so as you can see, I mean, it it it, you, it's, it's, it, it, it enables each person. Uh, to have their own voice, uh, have a pro have have a decision making process within the group, um, 
power is, is, is equally divided. Uh, there's the one person who doesn't have more power than the other. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, in an organization, you have the president and vice president and, and CEOs, and there obviously are, um, there are uh, titles that involve, you know, that, 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 that the person would have more, um, I don't want to use the word power, but would have more influence in the, in the organization. But typically, but typically speaking with inclusion, you really want um, the group, uh, you want the group to be uh, equally um, e e equal and also as well having all backgrounds so they actually belong. So I'm gonna actually play a video that's actually got a lot of traction. I played this video a few other times, uh, but I always find that it, it really, um, people will really gravitate towards it. So I'm gonna play it right now. Just give me one second. Actually, not to do. Sorry, I gotta enable it. Let me go back to it and this should work now. Hopefully. Sorry. Should work. Let me just go back to it again. Sorry about that, everybody. Let me put it in. Oh, it should work. There are people out there that would consider me, quote unquote, I hate this word, but a terrorist. As an indigenous person, um, you were known as somebody who potentially could be a drunk, have substance abuse issues. Being Indian, they might they have expected me to like know a lot about computers. It's sometimes a really unique experience navigating the world as a person with a disability who looks to be completely able-bodied. He made a comment about, well, don't worry about this that's going on because you won't be here too much longer. You'll be off having your next baby soon. Most women are, you know, told they need to behave a certain way. People really think that my generation is lazy. Just another blonde waitress. Hey, do you rap? The only black girl. I didn't belong. I guess kind of growing up, people made these assumptions about what I was supposed to be, but it was really eye-opening for me to realize that I had been making those same assumptions myself. We all like to think that we're inclusive, but sometimes we don't actually step back and think, wait a second, did I, did I hear everybody in the room? I mean, don't judge is the message, but it's also hard not to. I always thought that every gay man was flamboyant and rude. The older generation is set in their ways. Initially, I thought there was something weird about a girl who would want to be a camera operator because of the word cameraman and we still have to work past these things and stuff. I went into the school on my first day and there's these little girls and they're wearing hijabs and I was really intimidated by that. Have your initial judgments, but also be willing to learn. My definition of inclusion is a world and a society in which constructed barriers have been torn down. Inclusion for me is setting up an environment where everybody is comfortable. Open to accept other people's opinions. All individuals, regardless of their diversity, feel welcomed, feel respected. Uh, it means that they don't have to try to be what others expect them to be. Change is possible, but it takes the right person to, to make a change happen. I had a shop floor supervisor who stood up for me and sent out a company-wide email saying that Robin has every legal right to use the women's change rooms. It's funny because you do find allies in some of the strangest places. One thing we can do to support inclusion is to talk about it. You have to demonstrate that you're committed to this. Get to know people around you. Do something different. Learn something different. Learn about a culture. Different races, different religions, different belief systems, and see what there's good in all, in all those things. Be an active listener. That's one of the things I practice with other immigrants as well. Open up your mind. And take your time and get to know someone instead of putting them in this box, is showing that interest, it's going to surprise you. Ask me a stupid question. I don't care if it's a stupid question, just ask me. I'm an open book and willing to answer them. I don't see it as a negative thing. I see it as a teachable moment. Just ask me how to pronounce my name. It's simple. You decide that other people's feelings and experiences matter. We need to have more uncomfortable conversations so that we can drive more inclusion. And oftentimes, uh, it, it's not easy. We're not there, but, but certainly we're on the right track.
and it's important, otherwise change will never happen. My name is uh, Shomodib Ganduli, but people call me Sam. I am Leila Karim. Mutsa Matanga. Ms. Geneviève Leblanc. Ashley Pasila. Patrick Duff. Neil McLaughlin. Polina Gotchling. Rod Bolger. Jessica Shiv. Kazim Marcano. I'm a chef and I forge metals. A proud mother. Forklift operator and a truck driver. I envision a day when we can just be so accepting of each other, where we can make space for others. So to me, that, that video is always powerful. And I, when I always watch towards the end, I get my, my hair <laughs> sticks up and I get very emotional. So it's a very, um, it's a very good, it's a good video. It's, it's, it's always a popular video of the show. Um, now there are some questions. So let me just, um, so diversity seems easier than inclusion. What do you think? Um, I, I, I mean, as far as, a, as far as a recruiting standpoint, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, I guess it's, I guess in a sense, it's easy for recruiters to hire uh, a diverse workforce. I guess you can, you can, I guess you could always try to meet and 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 fill in, I guess do a check and box. I would you know do do the checkbox so to speak uh, of all the different ethnic backgrounds, um, uh, education, um, you know, LGBTQ. There's always different things you can you could fill in, but yeah, it, it's um, inclusion is hard because now once you have the diversity, now you have to include all of these people at the organization, and that is hard. It's very hard to do. Um, organizations no organization as far as i know has has mastered it um i mean it's and and the thing is really too each organ, each organization is its own breath is, is its own breath um it's breath of fresh air it's it's its own air it's it um it, it works differently uh, every organization is different so one will you know um you know ibm can do one way and facebook could do another um you know meaning that like if Facebook did it one way, it doesn't mean that it worked for IBM, but vice versa. Um, every organization is different. So it really takes a lot of practice, takes a lot of time. Um, it's tough. So yeah, um, it's, uh, I, I don't know if I want to say it's easier, but it's uh, inclusion is challenging, but it can be done if it's done correctly, but, but it also takes time. With the current issues going on now, do you still feel we're making strides in diversity and inclusion of concerns? Oh boy, that is a interesting, um, I don't want to get political, um, so I'm not going to, and we do have the uh, debate today at nine, um, but um, do you feel making strides? I, I feel that um, things are much more open now. Um, I think due to the current administration, I think that um, we have, a lot has come out. Um, not, not that the administration has done, it, has done it purposely or done it in a positive way, but a lot of things have come out. Um, you know, we, um, d &I is more important than ever. Um, you know, we, we've, uh, you know, the Black Lives Matter um, has definitely taken, uh, has, definitely, has definitely exploded really um, the last few years and especially since COVID. Um, I wish it didn't have to go, I, I, wish, I wish it didn't take George Floyd for it to, to get to where it is now, um, but but you know, but the Black Lives Matter and 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 and, and, and systemic racism has been discussed, um, has been really discussed, and, and organizations are taking a real stance on it. Again, I wish it didn't have to. I didn't. I wish something serious or something so tra tragic had to happen. But unfortunately, uh, and I'm not sure if it's just America, but unfortunately, in, in the world we are in, and I think in the in the history of the of, of the world, really, things have to happen in order for things to 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 um to advance so are we are we can start I, I believe we are um it's just it's, it's challenging um it, it's i can get to it like uh, if i wanted to get a lot more political i couldn't get into it more but i do think we are making strides it's just that, um it's taking time uh what can we do in our work settings to display diversity without coming across rude well, I mean, I think one of the main things that when I, when I try to really um, strive for and embrace really is having those open conversations. I think organizations need to make sure they have open conversations, making sure that they allow or not even allow, but, but um, embrace 
um, employees to have those have those discussions, give them the time and the resources to do so. Because I think when when you have when you're with colleagues um, all day long, uh, it's good to know more about them. I don't I don't mean I don't mean political affiliation or religion um, or well, I, I mean you, that those things will be discussed. But I mean more of the even more people's stories, um, hearing more about them. Um, what they've been through in life, um, how, you know, what what they dealt with when they were younger, where they grew up, where they moved to, you know, once you find, once you discover or hear someone's story, it brings it brings a um, you know closeness to you. So I, uh, it, you know, it it it, it certainly um, you know the conversations certainly help. Uh, so I think so. A question is, you know, what can you do in your workplace? What setting to display your risk of coming across rude? I think. I think, like for instance, if you if if, a, if there's a microaggression um, that happens at your workforce, uh, either you know if you are a if you know if if you are a let's just say um, you know you're a, you're a person of color and someone wants to touch your hair, uh, you have a right to say to that person, you know, you're not comfortable with that. Um, you know, there's certain things. That, that that can't be tolerated, or you as a, you as an individual can can set forth. Um, well, you know you can, you, you know if someone if someone asks you to do something uh, that 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 you don't want to do or you don't believe in, you have a right to say no. So I don't. I mean I I mean I think it's I think sometimes it can come across if you know if, if you say something back to somebody, it can kind of, it might come across as rude. But I think if afterwards you have a conversation about it, I don't think it would be, I don't think it would be perceived as rude um, in, in the end. Um, yeah, the video, I will try my best to, um, I have to find, so it's hard for me to multitask and do this all at once. Um, but really, if you, if you just, um, you can see right here, this uh, RBC to speak up for inclusion, when you speak about inclusion, it's RBC. If you search it in um, Google, uh, I believe it's on YouTube, yeah, so it's on YouTube, you could find it. Um, and let's see, some people confuse diversity with inclusion and think if they have people who look different in the organization, that's all, there's so much more to do. How can regular employees support inclusion? So yeah, I mean, uh, diversity and inclusion certainly does not just, it certainly what you look, look, look you know, certainly what you look, um, you know, how you look uh, doesn't, that, that's not the only thing that falls into diversity and inclusion. There's so many things that fall into divert, that, you know, that fall into the category of DNI. I mean, is people who are veterans, um, people, um, you know, education. A lot of times we don't know what education background you have. Um, you know, uh, even ethnicity. I mean, you might, you might you might perceive someone as something, but doesn't mean that's necessarily what they are. Um, you know, even um, I mean, even you, you, the, you know, even someone who's, um, you know, someone who's, um, you know, there's just there's just many. Uh, variables that 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 um that, that that come into play uh that that it's not just how you look it's also how you how how you know um is mental mentally um, you know we don't know how someone is mentally uh there are people who have anxiety um who have stress who have, you know have stress and whatnot and and you don't see that um you know so you know there are people who are um who you know who who are you know who are who are more, and I'm, I'm, I'm the two the two words I'm, I'm not thinking right now. I'm trying to get to the two words here, um, but in essence, you're right, absolutely right that, that that it's more than just it's it's more than just um, what you look like, what, what you look at, or what you look um, what you look like. It's 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 more internal, and that's the hard part about times. We don't know those internal things, and I think that's where conversations are so, are so important. And there was a question um with along with that that i don't want to miss um how can regular employees support inclusion i think well i don't know regular i don't like the i don't like the regular i'm not a i mean how can regular employees support i mean i think every employee is going through their own thing i think um it, I, I think if we really went through it and actually discussed every employee's situation in, in their life i think they will i think every employee has been through something um, obviously, others have been through uh, much more than others. 
Uh, but then how do you define that? How do you define much more? I mean, one person may look at it as another than another person. Um, so, I, I mean, how, how can people support? I think it's more, think about a better way of doing that is more how can one, um, I guess, how can one support, you know, how can, how can employees support one another? Um, and really, it's, I think, listening. Um, I, I, as I, I think it's, it sounds simple, but I think really listening is key. Um, we have an empathy. I'll admit, you know, my empathy, um, you know, I've had, I have had, um, you know, I've had issues with empathy myself. And I think since COVID, I really have learned to really kind of dig in more inside me, you know, dig, dig down more inside and, and kind of, um, you know, um, uh, figure out why I wasn't as empathetic to people as I, as I would like to be. So I think so that's one thing I had to work on. Um, so I think you, I think each person, as you go through life, you figure what things you need, need to, you know, you need to learn and need to really dive into. And I think that's how, you know, once you can figure out what's um, going on with your own self, then you could also help other people. Um, you know, since I know empathy is something that I need to learn more uh, to, you know, that I, need, that I need to learn more about, um, you know, that's going to help me with, with helping others, um, supporting inclusion, uh, diversity, and then there's also equity, making sure they have an equitable uh, workforce. And then I'm sorry, now there was another question. I was in a training that added equity to this framework. And I'm wondering if you think it is useful or distracting when some organizations are just starting to have diversity conversations, uh, which I just mentioned the word, I just mentioned the word um, equity. Um, do I find that it's distracting when some organizations are just starting to have diversity? No, I mean, I think you could have, I think you could have some conversations, or I think you could have the conversations. Um, you can discuss diversity, inclusion, equity. Um, but each organization is at a different standpoint. So, you know, really in order to get to a conclusion, you need diversity in order to, in order to, in order to, in order to really get equity to get an equitable organization, you do have to have more of an inclusive environment. But I think it's discussing it still isn't a bad thing. I mean, the organization discussing it of where they want to be in one, two or three years is not a bad thing. So yeah, no, I, don't, I don't think it's a distraction. Um, okay, so I think that's, I think, well, I think I'm, I think I am, I think, I think I reached all the questions. So regular employees are defined as non-leadership. Okay. So yeah, how, how can um, employees who are in a non-leadership position support inclusion? I, I think it's really, um, you know, if something happens that you see is not right, or if, the, um, you know, you can certainly, uh, the person that it happened to, you could speak to them. I mean, they, they may, you may not want to talk about it, give them, you know, give them the space. Um, you know, certainly, um, Employee resource groups, um, you know, a lot of organizations have ERGs, uh, maybe getting involved with those different groups. So a lot of times, you know, if, if there's a LGBT, you know, Q group, you don't have to necessarily be gay um, or queer to be in that group. You can be, you know, a non-LGBTQ and, and, you know, you, you could be a person who's not, who's not gay and, and be part of the group. So being in different groups, I think education, learning about all the different things that are going on. Like right now, me, I'm trying to learn as much as I can about um, about racism and, and systemic racism, so I'm doing a lot of reading on different books. Um, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, like White Fragility by Robin DiAngelo. So I'm trying to do, I'm trying to, I'm trying to educate myself. Um, you know, as as a white male, I don't know how it feels to be a, a, a black a black person. So I try to read. Um, so I think learning, educating yourself is is, is another way how you can can um, can help others. I'm going to go on. Just so I, so going to inclusion, inclusion is a sense of belonging. Uh, in inclusive cultures make people feel respected and valued for who they are as an individual or group. Uh, the process of inclusion engages each individual of people and makes people feel valued as being essential to the success of the organization. Evidence shows that when people feel valued, they function at full capacity and, and feel part of the organization's mission. I mean, it's, it's, it's really true. I mean, when, once you feel part of, once you feel engaged, once you feel a sense of belonging, that's when you are going to be working at your, at your best, at your full capacity, at, at, you know, at, at, at the organization you work for. That's when the organization is really going to get the best out of you, which is, in it, which is then going to create, you know, an efficient work environment. It's going to create an innovative work environment. It's going to create a more profitable work environment. I, I hate using the word profitable because we shouldn't do things just because of profit, but a fortune, but, but, you know, leadership, but, um, in the, you know, especially in the finance, um, in, in, you know, in the, um, 
the, for the person in the financial the finance department is going to want to see what 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 this is uh, driving, you know, how this is driving the organization as far as a, a positive um, as, as far as a, a positive revenue standpoint. So I mean, so so diversity. It drives, like I said before, innovation, engagement, results, business value, innovation. I mean, I'm going through here. I mean, it, it really, it drives many, many things. Um, and, you know, even the numbers there by Deloitte uh, find that it, you know, it's six times likely to be innovative and agile, um, eight times likely to, to achieve better business results, and twice as likely to, to meet or exceed financial targets. So there's really, there's no question that um, inclusion and diversity is, is best for an organization. Now it's really how does the organization do this? You know, how do they realistically drive inclusion and diversity? I've said, it, I said this a few years ago, and inclusion is essential for diversity programs to, to, to succeed. Uh, diversity is extremely important, but diversity can't sustain itself without inclusion. And then obviously COVID comes. Um, COVID-19 comes in, in March, uh, or I guess you could say February really. Um, you know, comes, it comes in and and changes and changes the world. Um, it changes um, not. I mean, it changes how 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 the workforce is. It changes not even the workforce personally, but with children being home. Um, the, you know, if you if you have you know if you live with your you know if you live with an aunt or um, you know your your parents who are elderly, it, it changes everything. Virtual. It, it just changed. Our, it changed all of our lives. And now, you know, how do you how do you um, how do you how do you have COVID-19 and now with, with diversity inclusion, you know, how do you combine the both? And, you know, realistically you have to, the both are combined and how do you deal with it? You know, cause it does, um, COVID-19 has an impact to, to all different groups, especially um, a negative impact towards marginalized groups, unfortunately. So how do we go about, how, you know, how do we go about change and how do we go about doing this in a way that's going to, um, uh, you know, how, how's it going how, how positive, to positively impact a, a workforce um, as well as personally. So one of the most important things that I found that I find during um, during COVID-19 has been really the mental health. Um, mental health has been a topic of discussion uh, of, that I think has not been discussed enough um, uh, until now, uh, until recently COVID-19 did, um, did did divulge how important mental health is. Not even just important, but the but the importance of discussing it. I'm finding a lot more people, at least in my in, in my world, I'm finding a lot more people talking about it, discussing it, much more open about it. Um, you know, embracing it too. If you have anxiety, you shouldn't be. Um, don't don't be ashamed of it. I mean, it's 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 it's, it's what you it's a part, it's a part of who you are. I mean, and you and you know, and if you're working on it. That's great. I mean, I, I know that's it's not it's it's easier said than done. Um, it, it's easier, you know. It's 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 much you know. It's easy for me to say to tell so for someone to say, oh, I have anxiety. I have a, um, you know, I have a, I have, I have anxiety. It, but but what I'm trying to really say is, you know, embrace it. Um, be who you are. If you have it, don't don't knock yourself for it. Um, you know, even it says. I by the way, Kaiser, um, the foundation uh, found that 45 percent of U.S. adults are experiencing negative mental health issues as a result of the coronavirus, up from 32 percent in March. That's just you know this 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 was um, this was a few months ago, so I'm not sure what that number is now. Uh, but the more we talk about it, um, the better, because then we can help each other out, and we can learn um, we can learn about all these different um, issues that are going on. So what I also do too. Uh, when I have, um, when I do workshops or when I do, um, you know, with my, with my own team, um, I try my best to have like a mental health check. Uh, so this is what I use um, with my check. I'm just sorry, I'm receiving more questions. I'm just, okay, sorry about that. Um, is it, so I do a mental health check and this is the box that I found. I think it's very simple because it has like the hearts um, and it just shows you, you know, it just, it, it's a simple, you know, if you're on a webinar or um, a team meeting and you have like five people, you can kind of go around the room um, and kind of go, you know, you can kind of give the color you, where you're at. I mean, I'm currently right now, I'm a yellow. I'm doing okay. I've been, I've been yellow for a very long time. Um, so I know where I'm at. And what happens, you don't have to go into why you are yellow at that meeting. But what happens a lot of times is a friend of yours who's on that call may call you and say to you, oh, why are you at that yellow? You know, you can kind of more of a discussion as far as why you're there. Um, having, you know, having 
discussion of where you're at is good. Um, and I think having these having this out there kind of lets people have a discussion of where they are at that moment. Um, I don't believe you should go right into a meeting and, and a meeting and go right into the talking points of the meeting, you know, right into the, you know, what, what the, the, the to-do list right away. I think it's you kind of should have a round robin room of what's going on. You know, um, I think it's good. I think it's good. It's healthy for, 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 for an organization. It's healthy personally too. When you get home, um, you know, with your significant other or your kids, you can do this too. It helps. Uh, it kind of it gives you a picture, and you kind of see it, and 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 it, and, and, it, um, and also um, then creates conversation. So then, how do you, you know storytelling and being your authentic self? And you know, where does inclusion come from with with telling these stories? So to, to me, in my opinion, it's you know, in order to have inclusion, really, we have to be able to discuss. Uh, and talk about all of our, all, you know, about who we are, what you know, what drives us, what uh, what we're about, uh, where we came from. I think once we know each other, you know, uh, personally, um, I think then it, it be, we're much more connected. Where you know, when we're truly connected in a very um, authentic and engaging way. And I think once those stories keep piling on, once we keep discussing, we kind of, you know, we can kind of then get into other issues and discuss. And I think once you kind of talk more with your colleagues, um, you all, I think, will become much more, um, uh, you much will be, you're, you're being much more engaged within your group. Um, even if you don't work in a team, you still, you still talk to other people, either if you're, I mean, well now, I mean, we're virtual, a lot of people, but there are people still who are working, you know, in the workforce who are now going to work. It may not be a full week, it might be a two day break, and then you're doing a hybrid or what, what have you. Um, but there's but these stories help, and really, it's, it's how do you how do you tell these stories? Because now that you know, now I, I I believe that it's that it's that it's an organization's um, uh, responsibility. I think it's I think it's an organization's responsibility to make sure that employees get to know each other, tell their stories. So with I actually I created um, I, I had a video done for me actually from my own my own stories i always used to play it because it gives you a little bit of a background of what of who i am and whatnot so i'm going to play it it's only two minutes long so i'm going to play it for you and we'll be back in one second so let me just kind of let me go back to the beginning okay I started all things app to allow people to be their full authentic self. And why I have that passion is really because of my own story. I didn't really know who I was. I didn't feel comfortable in my own skin. It, it's hard. Uh, it's it's challenging. It's scary. Around 24-ish, I you know had the guts to come come out to yourself, and then you come out to your family. And luckily, you know everyone, everyone accepted it. It was. I was fine, but still I was nervous. The days of keeping politics aside or not having these discussions at work is really gone. And I think people now are starting to realize that in order for us to move the needle in the right direction, we have to have these tough conversations at work. There are certain things that are just human rights. Black Lives Matter is a human right. LGBTQ is a human right. The employers need to give employees the tools and the resources and, and, and the time to do all this. That's where a consulting company would come in and help do that, create that time. We have to start small and then kind of go, go from there. I think having the conversations with senior members around unconscious bias, having conversations around inclusion, also just being able to listen it's very hard to disagree with something when you don't know how that person feels. It is if you give people the, the opportunity to talk with one another, they're going to be much more productive at work. They're going to make mistakes. I mean, I may make mistakes. Um, the person that the, that the you know the person the CEO or the CFO will make mistakes, but that's that's a, that's part of the process. I want to make a difference. I want to create a world where people can just be who they are. You're worth the time to tell your story. It's simple as it may sound, it's really talking. And it's really just having someone there to facilitate that conversation.
so that's just my little story. <laughs> I hope it um, gives you a little insight about me, a little, a little more about me. Storytelling, it's a way to create more understanding around the concept of inclusion. Everybody has a DNI story, even those you least expect. And I always, I always imagine the room. There's a um, image that always comes to mind um, uh, when you have like a boardroom with with overweight um, white men who are or who are in like you know the C. They're in the top, you know, the C-suite, and they but they all have um, blurbs on their head above their head, and they all have a story. Like one person may have a gay child, or another one may have. Um, you know, uh, an elderly mother who's, who's living with them, and, and, you know. So I think every, we all have our own story. Um, again, every, everyone's different. We all have a different stories. We've all been impacted differently in our lives. Um, but the least person you expect uh, more than likely has a story. And then the shortest uh, connection between two strangers is a story. And for me, you know, just for me, for, for a long period, I wasn't comfortable in my own skin. I wasn't pret I was pretending to be someone I wasn't. Uh, years later, I couldn't be happier. Why? It's because I'm being who I am. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm married uh, to the person I love. Um, it's taken me a while to get to get to where I am. It just didn't happen overnight. Uh, but it took a lot of patience, a lot of education, a lot of learning, a lot of um, a lot of just learning about myself uh, that got me to this point. Um, you know, and then as far as um, the National Storytelling Network, um, connecting inclusion to storytelling, interactive, using words, um, you know, using actions such as vocalization. Storytelling presents a story. It encourages uh, the active imagination of the listener. Um, and I also, I also want to make it. I also want to press that you don't have to be this world's greatest speaker to tell your story. You know, I'm by far the greatest speaker. I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm okay. But you know, I've. I've. I've learned now. I accept. I accept what. I accept what I have, and I tell my story with, with how the way I can. Um, and. You know, you can tell that you can tell that story when you're in an interview. Um, you know, be who you are. When I, I just had it earlier, just had a uh, did a, um, a Facebook live event uh, for the YWCA about um, interviewing, and you know, um, you know, being embracing, you know, embracing yourself. And how do you do that when you're, um, you know, when you're going for an interview? And how do you do that? And, and why? And I was, you know, wanted to point of that it's just important for you to be who you are. Um, you know, when you, you don't want to not be who, no, you don't, you don't want to not be who you are and work for and be an organization. It's just not going to work well. So I, I really, I really, um, I really do, um, emphasize that, you, that, 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 that we all be who we are. I know it's much easier. I know it might sound a little corny, but I really think that it, that it's important that, 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 that we really, um, get to a place, um, within ourselves, uh, where, where we, where we can really be our true authentic self. Um, so share your unique story and 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 encourage others to do to, to do the same. Um, you know, unique experiences are assets uh, that makes that, that makes us better employees, better companies, and by extension, a better society. I'll highlight something unique about your personal history. Um, you know, me, my my personal thing was my coming out mid my in my mid twenties and how it felt before my mid twenties. How was how I was this person that I really wasn't and how it felt so great to finally say, oh, I'm gay. I mean, it, it felt like it felt a big relief. And, you know, the coming out thing is, you know, you know you're not just coming, you know, there's a lot of, there's a couple ways of coming out. And I can go into that another hard time, but coming out, you know, involves coming out to yourself and coming out to your family and your friends. There's a whole, there's many different steps. Um, and, and there's other things besides coming out that involve um, different steps. It, take, it, it, it takes patience and time. And really, what I want to end with is just—it's very important just to be your authentic self. I know I've I mentioned my authentic self many times today, but I can't strive it enough. Um, and I think people are still having a hard time doing that. Um, I think we're getting there. We're, I think a lot of us are learning to be who we are, and, and, and you know, to be who we are when we're out and 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 and, and when, we're, when we're in the workforce. And I do believe that organizations are starting to realize finally that um, you know that that um, that embracing inclusion um, is best and not just for profitable reasons but because it's really the right thing to do and with that um, any questions I saw that there I know those questions earlier which I, I answered um, but in case there are none I, I want to wish everyone to be well and be safe uh, this is my information contact me I'm on Twitter Instagram um, Instagram Twitter that's my that's my um, my um, uh, my, my, hand, my, my Twitter handle and my website, all that stuff. So with Thank that. You, Anthony, can you tell us what's All Things app? 
So that's interesting. Yeah. So I um, created a Twitter account like five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, my husband and I just came with it, came up with it. And I started, I was a blogger um, about three years ago. I'm, I'm still, I'm a, still, I'm a blogger, but most people knew me as all things app. Okay. But just kind of, kind of, I kind of kept it going. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that's just what it is. And, and, and my vision is just, you know, making sure that we all can be our authentic self. Okay. We'll get there eventually. Yeah, uh, and and my lifetime, I hope. Uh, I'm sure it has taken a lot of courage to share your story. Thank you for letting us in. Um, I have comments. Are you on our Facebook page? I think. I yeah, think yeah, I you did. are. Yeah, okay. So I think, I, think I, I think I am. Yeah, so good. We can see um, some of the comments. So we have some comments for you to read. So I have, thank you for sharing this, Anthony. Uh, guys, I have the link to the... Um, to the uh, video I'll share on Facebook as well, and I'll share Anthony's contact information. So, you know, I have my questions for you. Sure. All right. So, um, uh, you know, I said I had some tech issues and I'm on someone else's computer right now. So <laughs> I don't have what I have in front of me, so let me just go ahead. Uh, so, you know, our mission at CDPD is that uh, we work with marginalized, with people from marginalized groups, um, BIPOC individuals, to increase representation in the workplace, um, to uh, help them to connect to resources for personal development, professional development. Um, so my question to you, and that's not a full mission, but that, that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> so my question to you, Anthony, is, and I ask everyone this question, if you've ever been marginalized, and if so, can you share with us um, why you were marginalized? Was I, have I ever been marginalized? Oh, um, I mean, I don't know if this really falls into the category of, of marginalized. I mean, I think marginalized people that are uh, marginalized, um, such as you call your skin. I mean, I, I, I mean, I can't, I, I can, I can escape that in a way because I can go out and I won't be I won't be judged uh, on the color of my skin. Um, you know, I, I am so, gay. So, okay. But, so let me give but, you a little more. But there are, okay. there, there are things though that, you know, that, that, that do, you know, like my husband and I really don't, don't hold hands because mm -hmm. we're afraid mm -hmm. of what someone could say. Um, you know, so I, don't, I, don't, I mean, there's, I mean, there are much more things happening in the world right now that is much harsher than, you know, than me not being able to, I mean, not that, not, not that my husband and I couldn't hold hands, mm -hmm. but we don't do it sometimes because we, we don't, we don't want to hear someone say, you know, fag, or we don't want to, we don't want, we don't want to hear someone say something, like whispering, we don't want to, we, we just don't want to deal with it. So, you know, that's something, you know, and when I was younger, I went through a lot of, like, you know, a lot of things, you know, people ask me, are you gay? Or, yeah, you sound like a girl. Um, you know, or I, I didn't feel like I belonged a lot of times because I, um, because I wasn't this manly masculine person. Um, but I, but it's hard for me to, 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 but it's hard for me to, I don't know if I would classify it as marginalized only because I know I never really, I never looked at it that way. Cause again, like I said, I can, I, I can, I can go out to a shop, right. And, 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 and wear a mask as a white person and not, and not be, and not be judged um, mm -hmm. because of the color of my skin. I mean, I, I may, I may talk and sound. Um, and I hate saying, I hate saying it that way, talking and sounding gay. Um, but other than that though, I can walk and, and be free and, and not worry about it. Whereas a black person is, constantly uh, and I want to say black I mean any any person of color brown black is 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 being looked at all the time mm -hmm. um, and it's horrible and I, and I don't know how it feels that's why I try my best to really um really educate myself on on racism and and, and, and watching as many documentaries as I can and and I, I actually I had just like you I have my I have webinars as well mm -hmm. um, I had a webinar just recently um, or like a, like a few weeks ago of Black Lives Matter, and I had a, I was um, a black, uh, I was a, I was two um, black female, two black females, uh, uh, two two people, two people of color, and one um, one black male, and I was just getting their perspectives on uh, Black Lives Matter, and it's just it's tough. Yeah, um, that is. So for us here, um, so we could be marginalized by anything, right? Okay. 
Uh, so not just black, just not just color, not the obvious things, um, <clears throat> not just you know gender. Uh, some people have been marginalized in the group, and they share because they think differently. You know, um, the other piece of our mission is that uh, we serve LGBT, LGBTQIA, who we say have been marginalized by people. We have had people in the group, uh, and I always give these two examples. So really nice looking white guy. You know, uh, you, you're like, how could he be marginalized? And he's like, and you said something about it earlier, I believe. You talked about coming from the military. You said a vet veteran, right? Did you say something about military? And yeah, that's why he was marginalized, because he came from the Marines. And so coming out of the Marines, trying to get back into whatever the mainstream employment market was, he was marginalized. And there were a lot of assumptions made about him because he was a Marine. We then have had... Annie Lieb, who's a white woman, attractive, and says, well, yeah, the men didn't let me speak in the workplace, you know? So I asked the question, because everyone always thinks the obvious. Oh, you're brown. Oh, you know, you're a woman. But there's so many ways that we can be marginalized. And I asked the question, because one, we don't marginalize ourselves. You know, it's some small person or groups of people who, are, who fear something in us. You know, they see some greatness in us and so they, they want to put us in the margin. But I asked the question, one, so we can see that there are so many other things um, that you can do even if you are marginalized. So mm -hmm. had you said, like you said, oh, well, I'm a white man and I, but, it, but me, you know, holding hands with my husband is not that big a deal. There is someone who is watching this right now who wants to hold hands with their wife or their husband and their same sex, okay? And that they're marginalized. So, so I don't want to slight anyone's, right? No, of course. So, I, you, mean, know what it is? you know, I think, I think what it happens, I think right now, I think because of the social unrest right now, Yes. I'm, I'm kind of, yeah, I think everyone is. I'm just, I'm, I'm realizing that really, <laughs> yeah. yes, you're correct. Yes. I absolutely. I absolutely mm -hmm. should be able to hold my husband's hand and not be, and not yeah. be um, judged yes. or anything. And then, yes. And but, then, but, but none, none of that sorry. compares to being, you know, mm -hmm. none of that compares to George Floyd being no. kneeled on and, 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 and for nine minutes and, and, no. and his life being taken away. No, none of it does. None of it does. I guess that's, uh, I guess that's where I was trying to... Yeah, that's, I know. And most people do. The thing for us is what, what I want to know for in the workplace, people who identify as... LGBTQIA may have the same challenges that I have as a black woman. You know, a woman may have the same challenges that you have LGBTQIA, white woman, right? Marginalized, maybe for different reasons, but still not having a voice in the workplace, in some workplaces, or not even being allowed to sit at those tables. And so mm -hmm. for us, we want people to know that in spite of anything that someone could marginalize you for, you too could achieve success and you too could Absolutely. lead a presentation that helps others, right? Like, because you're helping oh, yeah. so many people right now, Anthony, you know? Um, and so that's why I asked the question, like, it, and no, it doesn't compare to Black Lives Matter and I try to keep us- know, Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> and I try to- I do want to make a point, I made, I made this before too, you, you, you are totally correct. Everyone, everyone has a, has a place and everyone has, a, and everyone has, a, and everyone has the, um, Everyone has a story and everyone has a way to help other people. Yeah. Everyone, even, even people watching this right now, they may not know it right this second, but you're, you know, there's, but you have a way of helping people. You're here for a reason. Yes. Um, you know, I, I, I know a lot of people here, I think are looking probably for work. Is that right? Yeah. You know, I, I know it's, and I, it's, I just had a Facebook live account. Like I said, I just Facebook live um, with the YWCA, which is a um, young um, a youth woman empowerment. Um, um, uh, organization mm -hmm. and they were more of uh it's more for um helping those who are job seekers and and how do you go you know how, how are you as a job seeker um you know how 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 can you be your authentic self when you're going through the interviewing yeah. process yeah and i was kind of going through all that and, and so it just it just it just happened to be the same day where i'm doing with yours and they both kind of you yeah, know what happens is i think because of what's going on that the obvious things are the things we go to right um, the other thing, which no one has said here, any, we have had, I think you're our 34th presenter. <laughs> no one has said age. 
Oh, there is ageism. Right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Ageism. But one of the things I've learned about our group is I thought when we started this group, we were going to primarily uh, help young graduating seniors, you know, the 2020 graduates. That's what I thought. And according to Facebook analytics, they're less than 20% of our group members. Our group members, 50, either 50, I think 59% of our group members are, um, so I'm sorry, 64, are between 30, 35 and 55. Right. And so, yeah. So, you know, it's a, so I, ageism, ageism yeah. is a very, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. So it, and I'm, and I'm sorry, it's taken 34, even keeping counting me who didn't even um, bring it up. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't my, it wasn't my head earlier. I was going to say ageism, but yeah. one of the, one of the questions was if, um, if I, if I, if you, um, if I can't, if I, if I look at you and I don't see something that's, um, that's, a, that's a, 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 that may make you, um, I don't know, that, that may, put you know in a position of a diversity position mm -hmm. or inclusive position and i was thinking ageism then but then yeah. but then ageism you would see who i am if ever what it wasn't fitting in with it wasn't fitting in with the um the answer there but yeah ageism is 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 a yeah. big thing yeah I mean, and we i mean even even people that are um i can't i keep i'm thinking i'm saying internal external i'm not even thinking mm -hmm. two words there's um people that are the, 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 way, the way they behave, the way people's, um, if they're more external, they're more- Oh, introvert, extrovert. There you go, and thank you. Uh -huh, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Introvert and extrovert, yeah. there you go. I, mm -hmm. think, I was trying to think of it before and I could not think of the words. It's okay. Those, those are two big things too, I mean. Yes. That mm -hmm. are very big. I mean, people who are, intro I'm more of an introvert mm -hmm. than I am an extrovert. And, you know, it's, people assume mm -hmm. when you're an extrovert or introvert, you do these different things. And, and it's become a very big topic now in the DNI world too, where those are two very um, big things yeah. um, to deal with because yeah. everyone deals with things differently. A lot of people, you know, don't want to be in a social setting all the time and some people do. And, and how did, how does the organization, you know, how, how do they, how do they, um, how do they work with all these different mm -hmm. people? Yeah. It's hard, but it's, yeah. but it's, but it's, but it's paying attention and it's having the conversations. And I think as long as we keep doing that, you know, and I, and even to the group here, if you're looking for a job, I mean, I, I think everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. Like I, I was, I mean, I'm fortunate. I, you know, I, I have work. I'm, I'm, I'm and I'm blessed. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, 13 years ago, um, I was in a position where I was in a job where I did not like it all mm -hmm. uh, well, about 14, 14 years ago. And then, you know, it took, took, took about a year to find, um, to find myself, but which is, which is where it brought me to HR. I wasn't even oh. planning on it. I was, I was on, um, I was on words are escaping me. I think it might be just be late right now. <laughs> it's um, okay. Um, Craigslist, Craigslist. Craigslist. Okay. I was on, oh, I, I found my job through there. Mm -hmm. wow. years ago. Mm. And it, took, it took me six, six months to a year, but mm -hmm. I would never thought I would be giving presentations now, 14 years earlier. So I'm telling you, <laughs> Whoever's watching this, you, you're gonna get there. I mean, I mean, you're, you're there right now, but mm -hmm. you're you're gonna find it. It's it's there. It just it just it takes time. Yeah. It sucks. I know it does. It, it it's it's a, you know, but but it, but it will get better. And and I we all are supposed to be where we are right now. When we are, we'll we'll yes. get there. Mm -hmm. it just takes time. As um, thank you for that, Anthony. Let me ask you a second question. So. If you go back maybe 14 years ago or longer, I don't want to know how old you are. Um, what would you say to your younger self that you know now? Oh God, don't take, don't, don't, don't take yourself, don't take yourself so seriously. Mm -hmm. Have fun. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I, I love working. I absolutely <laughs> love, I love, I, I have a full-time job where I'm, I'm, I work in HR as employee relations and I also have my own consulting firm. I'm actually also running for town council. So oh wow! Ah. Doing a lot of different things, yeah. And, and I would never change it all because I really do like working. Mm -hmm. um, but I also enjoy what I do. So I always tell people: make sure you, uh, you know, do what you do what you like. Don't do it only for the money, but do it mm -hmm. because you like doing it. Because it's, it's going to be what you're doing for the rest of your life. Yeah. And really, as we get as we're getting, you know, as time goes on, I mean, you know, at least in the United States, I mean, they're, they're furthering the retirement age. So mm -hmm. be, people will be working a lot more than they, yeah. than, they, than, they than, than people are currently. So you like, like what you do, because you're going to be working for a long time. Um, <laughs> like it, love it. But yeah, but tell my younger self, I would say to have fun, but also mm -hmm. learn to um, give yourself time to relax. Mm -hmm. Give yourself, give yourself a mental health check or mental health day 
um, to relax. You don't always have to keep going, going, going. Yeah. Um, your brain, believe it or not, does need does need yeah. time. You know, take your week off on vacation. You know, do what you like doing. I, I love traveling with my husband. You know, when, when we could when we could travel. Mm -hmm. um, you know, <laughs> I, I loved it. Um, I I loved. The other thing too, it's very important is is and I, I didn't mention in my presentation, but it's also you know being comfortable being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that you know um, especially especially now with the social unrest, it's it's it's. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll even admit when I had that panel discussion, um, when I, and I, I was the, I was the moderator, and it was, it was, it was through my thing, all things app. I even felt a little uncomfortable in the conversation, being a white person. I didn't know what to say. Sometimes I wasn't, I wasn't sure I was saying the right thing. Mm -hmm. But then after all, after a few weeks, or I don't know what it was, I was, I started realizing I have. This is how it's going to be for me. I'm going to be uncomfortable. Yeah. So I have to learn to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just, uh, and I think it's like, that's going to that's going to go beyond the social unrest. That's going to be a lot a lot of things in our lives. I think we're going to have mm -hmm. to just kind of confront that individually. And, mm -hmm. and what's going to make us uncomfortable is for each of us is different. But um, it's just being, you know, it's just being comfortable, being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds. Yeah. We have a, we have a lot to go. We have a lot of um, we have a lot of stuff. A lot of a lot of work to do mm -hmm. in this country. Yeah. Um, but I'm, but I'm optimistic. <laughs> yeah, I am too. I am optimistic. Uh, and interesting, you talked about the introvert, extrovert. So we have had a, we had a presentation on it. I'll send you the link. It was excellent. Uh, a a self-proclaimed introvert who, um, in her presentation, she does paid lectures on it too and workshops on it, but she gave us an excellent one and it was how you can advance being an introvert and she gave a lot of good tips and oh yeah oh yeah it was excellent okay, i don't yeah mm -hmm. it was excellent. I, and that's that's the thing too um you know embrace it embrace mm -hmm. being an introvert don't be yeah. don't be shy of it um even i have a, I have a slight stutter I, I mentioned before i embrace it now i used to be i used to be um embarrassed of it years ago when i was younger but now i don't care i'm like you know what it is what it is and if someone doesn't like me for it or if someone doesn't want to hire me because of it then that's that's on them not me yeah, that's their loss I love it. All right, this is our final question. Uh, let me just see. Okay, I have comments uh, in here that I that I'd like you to look. Look, I love it. I love it. From Craigslist to presentations, go Anthony. <laughs> Craigslist <laughs> used to be the go-to for everything. Now, not so much. No. <laughs> go-to for everything, right? <laughs> I guess so. I got my actually. I got into the world of working in finance from Craigslist. Yeah. Uh, what was that? 2006, 2006. Oh yeah. Um, never, don't knock yeah, it. So that Craigslist, was, Craigslist was the thing. Yeah. I think it, it still exists. It's still there, but I mean, now it's just like, you know, after all the stuff, but, I, can, but I, think, I think now you can go on Facebook and sell things. Now you can yeah. just sell on Facebook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Our, our final question is, Oh, this is funny. My dog just did like this crazy stretchy sleep. <laughs> and just like, I, I disturbed her. <laughs> uh, my final question, Anthony, is if you could only leave us with one thing this evening, what would that be? What would you want us to walk away with? But what, what should the takeaway be tonight? The takeaway from, from tonight, my, my, my takeaway really is, oh, it's a few of them, but my main thing really, and, and this few. is really, uh, and I mean, I mean it from the bottom of my heart, I really do. I want everyone on this. I want everyone on this. This um, whoever, because I can't see everyone who's involved. But and I and I and I said it thousands of times to, during the presentation. But I really do mean it. Be who you are. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. I mean, I was. You know, I'm in my late 30s now. I, you know, I came out when I was 20. I came out to myself at 24, 25, mm -hmm. and then a year later, I came out to my family and friends. And. I would never take. I would never take things back. I mean, things happen with the way they're supposed to be. But you know, but my high school years, my 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 college years, I was I wasn't who I. I mean, I, it was a part of me who was who I am. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't too though. I was I was pretending I was someone I wasn't. Um, and that's sad. It's sad that that I, that I had to go through that. Um, now, yes, I could have came out earlier. I'm not, I'm not trying to say. I'm not trying to balloon me or anything. Yeah. But. And, and 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 when I say be who you are, I don't mean necessarily that people on the call are gay or the, whatever it is. I mean, just be, mm -hmm. what I mean yeah. is, you know, um, if you have a passion for something, go for it. Mm -hmm. um, if you 
Um, you know, if you want to do something, go for it. You know, obviously now with COVID, be con you know, be cognizant of COVID being in existence right now. Mm -hmm. But I really do mean it. Yeah. You know, life's too short. You know, be you know, if you if you want to run for like me, I always wanted to run for um, a political office, even if I'm, I'm not running, I'm not running for president or anything. Well, I hope it's still. You never know. You never um, know. But you know, I, I it's something I wanted to do, so I did it. Um, just yeah. you know, do you know make a list of things you want to do they don't have to necessarily be like you know flying to you know hawaii or whatever it could be mm. just everyday things and and do them and then and, and really also another thing to experience things you don't normally do go on virtual and that, I mean, now in the world everything's virtual you know do things that you wouldn't do normally read a book you normally wouldn't read um do a virtual thing that you normally wouldn't do on either maybe on a religion or you know, or if you're not really, if you don't know, if you don't know much about Black Lives Matter, join a Black Lives Matter um, virtual. Um, there's many of them. Learn about it. Um, you know, uh, any there's so much, there's so much, there's so many different things to learn about. You know, find something, do, do something, or, or go to a go to a different park you normally wouldn't. I mean, obviously yeah. wear a mask and be socially distant, yeah. but you know, do things you normally wouldn't. Be uncomfortable. Yeah. Don't just I, fall into I, that that trap of doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Throw something different there. Go a different way if you're walking, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I I I take I'll take that too. Like one of the things I have I have white friends, but I don't, you know. And so all my white friends are either work friends and we're social and we speak and maybe we may go out for lunch or brunch twice a year or something. Well, now it doesn't count. I've been in I was in Africa for so long, but prior to that, you know, I got with a friend who was white once in a while, and it was always from work. I have one from school. I realize like I don't have any white friends, right? So that's something I want to change. If only for um, because I want you to learn more about me, and I want to learn more about you for that one reason, right? So I want to have more friendships with people who are different. Now I have a lot of Asian friends and Black friends and Latinx friends, but I don't Indian, African, everything. But I I don't have any white friends, and that's interesting to me that I just. It's been over the last few months that I realized that like I have, um, and some of you are listening to me now, I know I'm friendly with a lot of white folks, you know, but I don't remember the last time a white person has come into my house who wasn't selling me something or repairing something, yeah. you know? No, I mean, I and do, so, when I've done, yeah. and, and, I, and that's, that's really not unusual. A yeah, lot of times I know. We, you know, we <laughs> fall, or we, or we tend to gravitate towards people that are like us. And yes. I've, done, I've done, um like a, I've done, a, uh, when I've done workshops or presentations too in person, it's more of an in-person work. It's more of an in-person um, um, uh, exercise, mm -hmm. but it's like, um, it's, it's, it's called the, um, I forget what it's called, but basically what you do is you write, you write names of your closest friends and you don't, mm -hmm. you don't, you don't, you're not supposed to put family, just close friends. Mm -hmm. And you do a checklist of, you know, are they black or white or what, what you know, what, 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 what race do they fall or, 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 or this, you know, or ethnicity, where do they fall into? Um, if they're L, if they're part of the LGBTQ, mm -hmm. um, if they're, they're, if, you know, their age and education. And a lot of times when you look at, when you look at the people your friend, your best friends with or close friends with, a lot of times they're really, they're, they're people like, they're the people yeah, who are like you. Like us. Yeah. There's, there, I'm not saying all the time, there are people yeah. in the mm -hmm. room who do tend to have a diverse, friendships but a lot of times most of for the most case most people tend to be you know you you you, you tend to be with people like like you know like-minded people mm -hmm. um so you know it's it's you know it's it's it's, it's, it's a lot of us so mm -hmm. i i really think um you know but but you see but you said it though so so um Oh yes, yes. Brian just put the trusted ten. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what it's called mm -hmm. the trusted ten. Trusted ten. Okay. But not not, but not, not not a lot of people have ten yeah. best friends. So it's usually like trusted mm -hmm. four or whatever. How many friends you you know mm -hmm. friends you have? But yeah. it's a good exercise. You actually can go on. Um, you can Google it and um, okay. you can do it. You know, with other people you wanted. You know, if you want just you were just kind of curious. Yeah, I want to. I think if we all, well, I don't want to put anything on anybody, but I do think that if we got to know different people more intimately we'd have less of the situations that we've been having. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, but of as course, of absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But, so. but we can't change that. We can only go forward. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Wow. 
I thank you for coming this evening, Anthony. And My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, and please go into the chat if you can. They're, they're laughing at me. They say I was, I was a Craigslist guru. I used to do everything on Craigslist. <laughs> uh, and, and you remember the books? I had a bookstore. And on, uh, remember that? I had a bookstore on eBay and half.com. <laughs> and you back then, this is so funny. Look back then, I'm kind of much older than you, Anthony, right? So there used to be, <laughs> there used to be you, YouTube group, no, Yahoo groups. <laughs> and yeah, they had yeah, I do, I do remember recycle and you could get books you could get anything and people would give away books and i mean i got some masterpieces from craigslist like priceless books let me i'm going all oh, off the topic but yeah i used to love craigslist and they all remember the people in the chat <laughs> but anyway i thank you for joining us anthony no problem you know, my pleasure you're always welcome to come back um you're always welcome to come back whenever you'd like Thank you. And again, this was great. Thank you so much. And, you, and you're doing great work yourself. So thank you so much for doing this. And again, congratulations on, on, on your you. award. Thank you. So uh, everyone remember to connect with Anthony and let him know that you saw his presentation this evening and you're a CDPD member and you'd like to connect on LinkedIn, not Facebook. Okay. All right. <laughs> thank you, Anthony. Thank you, everyone. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.